In this video, we will be measuring the gate charge of a MOSFET using Keithley's ACS software version 6.2. Both MOSFETs and IGBTs are three terminal devices used in switching and signal amplification. Despite the similarities in their usage, MOSFETs and IGBTs operate very differently. For example, an IGBT can handle very high voltage and power, while a MOSFET is made much better suited for very high frequency applications. So as a result, the turnoff time and switching speed of a MOSFET is much quicker, but an IGBT does produce lower forward voltage drop and can accommodate transient voltage and currents. The switching speed of a device is affected by internal capacitances and are typically specified in data sheets, but the gate charge of a device can also be used to assess the switching performance of a MOSFET. So what is a gate charge measurement? In the gate charge method, a fixed test current is forced into the gate of a MOS transistor, and the measured gate source voltage is plotted against the charge flowing into the gate. A fixed voltage bias is applied to the drain terminal. Figure 1 here shows the typical gate voltage versus gate charge plots. The voltage plateau region is the region when the transistor is switching from the off state to the on state. Figure 2 shows the typical gate and drain waveforms as a function of time. So for our test setup today, we're going to be using two SMOOs. And this figure illustrates a basic circuit diagram of the gate charge test. SMU1 is connected to the gate terminal of the MOSFET and forces the gate current while measuring the gate source voltage as a function of time. Meanwhile, SMU2 applies a fixed voltage to the drain at a specified current compliance. The MOSFET source terminal is connected to the force flow terminal or to ground. Now, upon opening the Automated Characterization Suite or ACS Software version 6.2, you're going to be met with a screen that looks like this. From here, in order to start our gate charge measurements, we're going to right click on home, insert device. And so for my setup and my purposes, I'm going to choose this N type power MOSFET. Click OK, open. Now on this screen, we're going to take the opportunity to tell the software exactly which SMU is connected to which terminal. Now, for the gate charge measurement, source is always going to be connected to ground. My gate is connected to my first SMU channel, but my drain is actually connected to my SMU4. Next, we're going to go over here and select new PTM, import. And from the PTM library, we're just going to scroll down and select gatecharge.py and open. Now, this is the gate charge measurement PTM. So from here, we're just going to add our inputs to the input table. So like I said before, our gate SMU is SMU1, but our drain SMU is going to be SMU4. Source is going to be ground. Now my drain to source voltage, I'm going to leave at 10 volts. My current compliance, I'm going to bump up 2.1 amps. The gate current is going to be 1.5 e to the negative 8. The gate to source voltage is going to be 10 volts. I'm going to lower my timeout to 10 seconds. Now that we have all of our parameters in the input table, the next step is to determine what the C offset value is, or our capacitance offset. And to do that, we're going to run the test with an open circuit. Now that the test is done running, we're going to go over to the data tab, and we're going to capture the CF value. This will be our capacitance offset. Go back to setup and just paste that in. Now we can run the test for real with the device installed properly and the circuit fully closed. At which point, we'll run the test again. 
Now that the test is finished running, we'll go to data. And you can see all of our data is filled in. And if we go to plot only, we have this lovely gate charge plot. That looks like the typical curves I mentioned earlier in the video. Now to get this plot, what I did was I went to plot here and I plotted on the x-axis VG charge, which is the gate charge values, VG array, which is our gate voltage, VD array, which is the drain voltage, and ID array, which is the drain current on the y-axis. And that's really how simple it is to do gate charge in ACS.